What's going on guys? Welcome to this video explainer on video production for TV-based instruction or TBI. By the way, I am Teacher Ian. Our goal for today is to be acquainted with the three stages of educational video production for DepEd's TV-based instruction. But before that, let's get to know first the nature of video. Video is from the Latin word videri, meaning to see. Video is also the recording, reproduction, or broadcasting of moving visual images. Video as a learning tool has the following strengths. First, it stimulates audiovisual learning, thus an effective tool in capturing audience attention. According to the Learning Pyramid of the National Training Laboratories Institute, learning or attention is effective by 20% using a video material. Uh, learning material, video gives us an instantaneous playback capability wherein you can play it in repetition to grasp information better. Video can also be easily reproduced through phones and laptops among others. And it may be watched via broadcast platforms like TV and internet. Lastly, video can be used for learning in multiple domains like cognitive, wherein information is stored from abstract ideas to concrete. In affective, wherein information can be emotionally felt or learned. In psychomotor, where one can learn from demonstrations or actions. And of course, video has its um, downsides. One, producing a video is expensive as it requires a lot of skilled people to make and costly equipment to use. Two, producing a video would require a lot of production time. Three, unlike other digital learning materials, an educational video requires an extra working force in the presence of a learning facilitator. Lastly, video is hardware dependent or hardware limited, meaning learning may be hampered when devices that uh, you are using is damaged broken down or simply if there are power problems. It is also difficult to learn from a video if the screen of the device that you are using is too small. Text and some video details may be omitted or taken for granted during the viewing process. And if one is residing from a far-flung area, reception could really be a big, big problem. And we have these icons which tells us that we are now in the production phase. Educational video production involves three important stages, the pre-production, production proper, and post-production. Let's go to the first. In pre-production, planning and preparation for production are the key activities. The production team um, should do their research, write their scripts, make storyboard, set the location for the actual production, prepares the cast and crew, um, look and manage human resources, and all the activities um, in relation to the production phase is done here. Basically, this is all the preparatory activities before production proper. So let's discover more on pre-production by knowing about the production crew, who are our target audience, who are responsible for script writing and storyboarding, and what will be the setting and production design of the actual production. These are the members of our production team from our Telescuela episode on living and non-living things. Uh, for you guys who were not able to watch this video, you may check it out from this channel or from the link which I have posted below. In these pictures, we have our directors, actors, teacher broadcaster, production designer, makeup artist, um, graphics artist, video editor, animator, cinematographer, script reader, script writer, videographer, sound recorder, and all of the possible human resources for a film production team. You may have noticed that I have mentioned a lot of production crew members, but only a few can be seen from this screen. Well, um, that is because most of us were able to multitask during this production process. As I have mentioned a while ago, making a quality video is very expensive. 
Um, that is why a team should be very resourceful just to cut the cost of um, expenses. To identify the production team, you can assign the following roles to five crew members. Um, in case you lack human resource, your crew members may multitask roles or interchange the following roles depending on your abilities and skills in video making. Example in the first role, scriptwriter can also be a script reader during the actual production process, or a teacher narrator can do the script writing as he or she will also the, uh, do the memorization of the lines. Second, if one is good in making digital graphics, he or she can also act as an illustrator who will draw and digitalize the illustrations. He or she can also edit animated graphics if he or she is uh, skilled in editing. Third role is the director who is knowledgeable in directing the shots and sequences of the video. He or she may plan along with the illustrator and the graphics artist for the storyboard. Fourth, the video editor can also act as animator if he or she is uh, already skilled in manipulating videos or graphics, or act as videographer and director as this is the usual setup in making indie films. Lastly, the talents who can also multitask in various roles. In more efficient manner, um, the teacher narrator can also do the script writing. And those are the members of the production team. The mentioned roles are just basic roles in video making. There are various tasks that may need more people, so um, resourcefulness and ability to learn skills in film and video making is very important. In creating contents like script, graphics, music, acting, and production design, the team must be fully aware of the target audience. They should know the appropriate content for um, specific age group, the grade level they are in, their interests, their socioeconomic status, gender for gender sensitive content, um, language or dialect for better understanding, lifestyle, um, religion to avoid re uh, religion biases, and ethnicity for cultural acknowledgement. Um, these are very important considerations in making your content fair and specific to the learner's needs. Also, we need to remember that in depth ed, a content should be um, indigenized, localized, and contextualized. In making a video, especially the educational type, it is very important to plan. This constitutes almost 50% uh, of the whole production process. Efficiency in a production is attributed to pre-production planning. Pre-production is like making a lesson plan. Without necessary planning, it would be hard for the teacher to deliver the lesson with efficiency. Script writing will be discussed by teacher GL and um, I also included in the discussion in the link below. So just check it out guys. Moving on, the expected output, it is very important to do the storyboarding. Storyboard contains series of ordered drawings with camera direction, dialogue, or other pertinent details. Storyboard sketches out how a video will unfold shot by shot. In storyboarding, you don't need a detailed illustration of the whole sequence or shots. You may use a um, stick figure added with description to have a full visual of the expected output. Also, if your videographer is neither the director nor the writer, it would be hard for him or her to compose a shot without the visuals and instructions. So it is important that the videographer knows what the director is thinking and this is possible through storyboard. In storyboarding, one um, should be familiar of the terms for the illustration process to be efficient. With that, we will describe the various um, shot distance, shot angle, camera movement, rule of thirds, headroom, and nose room to clearly express your ideas into video. First is shot distance. There are actually four basic camera shot distances. Others like extreme close-up, extreme long shot are just variations of these shots. You will be using these terms in storyboarding so you better take uh, note of these terms. 
To provide aid in our discussion, I will be showing you pictures taken from learnaboutfilm.com. In framing the teacher narrator, long shot is um, not necessary actually as we suggest that video should be more engaging and should draw the attention of the learners. Um, long shot gives us a distant feeling, thus learners may not appreciate the facial reactions of the teacher narrator. But long shot is essential in establishing the location, so you may add this during the opening of the video to establish your studio, or if used in the insert video, you can establish the setting of a certain scene. Then the full body shot, which uh, shows the subject from head to toe, and not much of a background is being emphasized in this shot. We also have medium shot, which shows the subject from waist up or waist down. This can also be called as a mid shot. Lastly, the close up, which shows the subject's shoulders up to the top of the head. And these are some of the variations of shots we framed in our previous Telezuela episode. Next important factor in storyboarding is to identify the three shot angles. Shot angles are important as they indicate meaning, emotions, and power in film. First is the high angle, wherein the subject appears small and weak with head larger than normal size, as it is the structure near to your vision and it projects bigger visual appearance. High angle shot means that someone is being looked down and it connotes strength to the viewer and um, weakness to the one being viewed. This is also known as bird. In this angle, subject appears large and formidable, with head smaller than normal size. This angle connotes dominance and power to the subject being viewed as the viewer appears to be small and is being looked down. This is also known as worms. And in normal angle, the subject and the viewer appears to be equal as there is no level of elevation in the shot. This is how the teacher narrator should appear on the screen. Another key element in storyboarding is the camera movement. What we are about to discuss are just the basic ones that may be useful in the insert video. First is zoom in or zoom out, which emphasizes the subject. As the video is being zoomed, the attention of the viewer focuses on the subject while revealing or hiding other elements on the screen. I will show you a sample clip from our Telescuela episode. This clip though is a combination of zoom out and pan right. Pay attention to the details and camera movement as I play the video. Kag ini ang Telescuela, kung sa diin padayon ang pag-eskuela sa inyo tagsa-tagsa ka mga television. Hello. And that was zoom out. Another camera movement that may add creativity to your video is panning. Panning is helpful when you want to selectively emphasize the elements of your screen. Here is an example. Maayo adlaw mga bata. And it was pan left. The camera moves from the right portion going to the left, um, focusing the subject in the end. And from the perspective of someone who is looking up or down, tilt is another way to selectively emphasize a scene. And to give credit, the clip that I will show you is from the short film Luha Sambulalakao by Kenneth De La Cruz, produced by Sinica Simanmoa in the Department of Tourism Region 6 Film Grants Program. And that was tilt down. The camera moves from the horizon going down. Um, emphasizing the subjects. And Dali shot. From the word Dali, 
a wheeled cart or similar device used in filmmaking and television production to create smooth horizontal camera movements. Dolly shot gives perception of closeness or distance and it draws viewer attention into something specific on the screen elements. Another clip from Lua Sang Bulalaka will be shown as an example for this context. And that was Dali out. So the camera itself moves from um, the point or the center point wherein it needs to zoom out in a way that it shows everything on the screen. And lastly, the tracking shot. Tracking shot is done when the camera follows the subject laterally. This gives the audience a feeling of them following the subject in a lateral manner. In this context, we will view a sample clip from the short film Tangis by Kenneth De La Cruz produced by Tai Tai Productions. Yes, Mr. Garcia. Sorry, pero wala na akong gatag special exam. Mamuno ko naman ito para special exam. So if you have noticed, the camera follows or tracks the subject as the subject moves to the right. Another element in storyboarding that we need to understand is the rule of thirds. In the illustration provided, you can see nine sections within a single frame. Basically, rule of thirds is a guideline which applies to the process of composing visual images such as film and video making. Studies have shown that when viewing images or motion pictures, people's eyes usually go to one of the intersection points most naturally rather than the center of the shot. Headroom is another visual composition that provides aesthetic and balance to the image. Too much room between a subject's head and the top of a frame results in dead space. It's uninteresting and leaves the viewer feeling awkward while too little room can result to a suffocating and annoying view. Nose room or sometimes lead room is the space in front and in the direction of moving or stationary subjects. The room that is usually in front or side of the subject leads to a space that could be followed or can just be a space for visual space and aesthetics. And um, those are the elements of our storyboarding. Let us now proceed to the last three preparations conducted during pre-production. Before the production phase, all preparations for the shoot, whether in studio or outdoor, must be arranged. The team must identify the location for pre-production planning, the location for actual shoot, and the location for editing and other post-production activities. If COVID-19 pandemic didn't happen, locations are usually planned so that the group could work together efficiently. But as for the teachers, the most convenient location for the whole production process is the school. Once location is identified, the team can eventually set up for the production design of the shoot. Lastly, it is the role of the production manager to facilitate the schedule of every cast and crew members for them to be able to identify the perfect working schedule for the whole team. And we are done with the pre-production stage. We are now to proceed with the actual shoot or the production proper. On your screen, you can see two cameras with several buttons and icons. What do you think are these for? Well, buttons and icons make up the camera hardware that leads us to camera settings. Camera settings is just one of the topics that we are about to discuss in the production phase. So, production phase or production proper is when the actual audio-visual recording and shooting happen. In production, we will discuss camera settings for us to be guided in the actual shoot and identify shooting equipment that will aid us in recording good video material. Before we shoot, let's be acquainted with our camera and the most basic settings we are going to use while recording. 
these are the white balance, frame rate, video format, aspect ratio, marker display, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. First in our camera setting is the white balance. White balance determines color accuracy in a given scene. In here, you can select from the preset your desired color for the scenes that you are recording. Some of these presets are the incandescent, fluorescent, direct sunlight, cloudy, shade, and aside from these presets, you can also calibrate your color if your camera has a color temperature setting. Another setting is the frame rate, the frequency at which frames in a video sequence are displayed. This is expressed in frames per second or FPS. Basically, frame rate is the number of images per second. Each image represents a frame, so if a video is captured and played back at 24 FPS, that means each second of a video shows 24 distinct still images. The standard is 24 FPS for movies, 30 FPS for TV broadcast, and um, you can record by 60 FPS or more if you intend the clip to be edited in a slow motion. The reason for this is that if there are more frames per second, the smoother the slow mo can appear. I will not discuss further all the video formats, but I suggest that you use MP4 in recording for best output quality. MP4 or MPEG4 is mainly used for web-friendly products that can be sent over the net. Um, this format also allows recording a high video quality or high quality video that can be compressed so that too much memory or space is not occupied in your computers. Aspect ratio is the height and width of a video on screen. This proportion is measured in frame size by pixels. For example, in standard 4 to 3 ratio, Frame size can be 720 by 480, 1024 by 768, 1600 by 1200, and in a widescreen 16 to 9 ratio, frame size can be 1280 by 720, 1440 by 1080, 1920 by 1080. Remember that the higher the frame size, the greater the number of pixels it contains. Thus, the wider the screen it can be played with. Marker display, also known as the screen guide, directs the videographer on how to and um, where to frame the subject. It guides and provides marker for better shoot guidance. Then we have aperture. Aperture is an opening in a lens through which light passes to enter the camera. The amount of light provides either shallow or large DOF or what we call depth of field. Or in depth of field is the distance between the closest and farthest objects in a photo that appears acceptably sharp. For example, when you open your lens to 1.4 aperture, it gives the camera a wider opening for the lights to pass through. Thus, the subject appears bright and our camera can only focus few elements in the frame. In contrast, when aperture is slightly closed, only small amount of light passes through the camera, thus a darker image but also focuses almost all elements in the frame. When shooting for an educational video, it is recommended that we use kit lens with an aperture of 3.5 to 5.6. In this way, we can focus a lot of elements in the screen while giving our camera an ample of light. Another way of adjusting light entry to the camera is through the shutter speed. Shutter speed or exposure time is the length of time when the film or digital sensor inside the camera is exposed to light. Meaning this is the amount of time that each or individual frame is exposed to light. In video, shutter speed is almost always in fractions of a second. The number used in setting your um, shutter speed refers to the denominator of that fraction. So, if um, you set your shutter speed to 60, that means each frame is exposed to light for 1 over the 60th of a second. 
the faster the shutter speed or the faster the shutter closes, the more motion it captures and the lesser the light enters. While when the shutter speed is slow or the shutter closes slowly, the less motion it captures and the greater the light that enters. Just a tip when recording, your shutter speed should be approximately double the number of frames per second that you are recording. So if you're recording at 30 frames per second, that is our normal recording FPS for TV broadcast, your shutter speed must be set to at least um, 1 over 60th of a second. Because your FPS, which is 30, your, your shutter speed should be 60 as this is the quantity when doubled. We say at least because we can still use other quantity greater than its double quantity of 60 like 1 over 70, 1 over 100, or 1 over 125. In digital photography, ISO measures the sensitivity of the image sensor. The same principles apply to film photography. The lower the ISO number, the less sensitive your camera is to light. Higher numbers mean your sensor becomes more sensitive to light, which allows you to use your camera in darker situations. The cause of doing so is more grain. Grain or the dot particles you see when you overexpose your subject is also called noise. So in setting your camera light responses, you need to properly adjust exposure triangle. Exposure triangle is consists of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. I suggest also that the videographer should be well acquainted with his camera to fully understand exposure triangle. And we are down to this picture which tells us that we are now in production equipment. And these are some of the basic equipment that you may need in video recording. We have video camera, tripod, lights, audio recording device, boom pole, light reflector, memory card, teleprompter. If you lack some of these uh, mentioned equipment, it's okay. I will teach you some tips on how to be more creative in utilizing available resources. Video camera. Camera is partly responsible for the quality of our video output. Meaning, quality depends also on your budget. The more expensive the camera is, the better function and better quality of video it usually gives. In the previous Tele Escuela episode, we used uh, two different camera brands, the Sony and Canon. Just a tip in recording using two camera setup, if you can provide a camera with the same brand, that would be really helpful especially in saving time in color editing and for quality purposes. If you have two different camera brands, you will need to recalibrate the color, uh, the exposure triangle, and some other settings that may affect the quality of the recording. Also, since camera brands have distinct quality, you may find it hard to adjust a setting that would match the other camera settings. Example, when we did the recording using Sony and Canon, Canon's white balance, even in auto mode, gives us a different color than that of the Sony's. Um, their video output is also different, so it took me time in editing to make their colors and quality match. So what happened to the final output? Um, the appearance is slightly obvious that the other angle has a different quality than the other angle. Tripod helps a lot in stabilizing our shots. When we do movements like pan or tilt using our hands, it would be obvious in the video output that there is slight shaking. But when we use tripod, the movement becomes fluid and smooth. Tripod is very necessary not only for camera movement but also for protecting our cameras. When attached to tripod, cameras become secure than just placing them on top of the table or a chair. If you don't have a tripod, I suggest that you secure the area where your tripod is positioned. But I really suggest for you to buy um, one as it is cheaper than the cost of getting your camera fixed when it falls off the table. In our shoot, we use tripod not only for camera but 
also for the lights. Then the lights. Lights are essential in making our video look professional. Lights are very helpful as it lessens the videographer's burden in adjusting the exposure triangle. Lack of lights may result to dimmer video appearance or when uh, editing, your video may appear to have a lot of noise or grain if adjusted. But in case that lights are not available, you can still shoot your video by opening the windows and doors of the room. Um, or you do the setup outside. The only problem in here is that when you um, do the setup outside, you have to secure that it's not noisy or else the sound will be picked up in the recording process. Also, lack of light inside the studio or outside may result to light imbalance, thus the shadows in your video output. Here is our setup when we did the shoot in our mini studio at school. On your left screen, you can see that there are three light sources. Two side lights which are called panel lights or panel LED lights and the center light which is LED flood light. On the right, we shot the insert video at Mom Dennis's house and we used the same setup. For the recording device, there are three basic devices. One is shotgun microphone, the other one is lapel microphone, and the camera's built-in microphone. The problem in using camera's microphone is that when subject is far, echo and unnecessary noise are recorded along with the narrator's or actor's speaking lines. Boom mic is the most effective equipment in recording. The problem is boom mic costs a lot. Lapel mic is also a good equipment and can substitute to boom mic, but the problem is if it is attached to a speaker's body, um, it is very sensitive and it can record body or fabric movements, even if um, sensitivity levels in the camera is adjusted. If lapel and boom mic is not available, you may use your phone's audio recorder. You can attach your earplugs there and hide it somewhere as a recorder. In our case, we used lapel mic in our studio recording and placed it in an improvised boom pole for recording of the insert video. Then we have boom pole. It's a pole where recording devices and other lightweight equipment are attached for extension purposes. As we don't have a boom pole, we were able to utilize a PVC pipe to extend our lapel mic. A light reflector can reflect light to the subject and it can be used as diffuser to balance light. Reflector is useful when shooting is done outdoor. File storage devices are very important. In video recording, it is advisable that we use larger micro SD storage capacity as recording video requires a lot of memory space. For a longer video output duration, I suggest that you use a 32 gig or bigger SD storage capacity. When you're done recording, always back up your files. Save it to your laptop and external hard drives if available to prevent data loss due to corruption or viral invasion. Lastly, the teleprompter or what they call the idiot board. This allows the teacher narrator to glance on the board whenever he or she forgets the lines from the script. Um, this can also aid the teacher narrator in keeping track with the lines from the script. During our shoot, we utilized a small TV as a screen or teleprompter. And I can say that this one is really an effective aid to our teacher narrators. And these icons. I bet that most of you are familiar with this. This will lead us to the post-production phase. This phase involves all activities after production proper. 
Mostly, this is about um, video editing, titling, sound editing and mixing, dubbing, visual effects, and processing. In post-production, we will discuss editing, uh, the basic editing software, and what to consider in assembling contents. Video editing is the process of manipulating and rearranging video shots to create a new work. To do the editing, it is important that the editor is keen and fastidious or meticulous because editing softwares may tend to be complicated if not studied well. And these are some of the softwares we used for editing videos. Final Cut Pro, which is uh, solely for Mac OS, um, and the others, which can be used for um, Windows OS. So all of, actually all of these editing softwares can be used in either Mac or Windows uh, operating system. Only Final Cut Pro is used for, um, is solely dedicated to be used in Mac OS. The most basic ones and um, are easy to use are Windows Move Maker and um, Wondershare Filmora and also the Cyberlink PowerDirector. For starters, they may explore through these softwares. For the complicated ones but with complete and extensive features, you may advance your skills using Final Cut Pro, Sony Vegas, and uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. For startup editors, my tip in editing is for the editor to explore more softwares and um, find out what works best for you. Once you have selected your editing software, work with it by testing some tools and exploring its workspace. YouTube tutorials would be really helpful in this case. And these are the hardwares that you might need in doing your editing. In editing audio files, it is best that you use headset. Once you're done editing all the necessary audio and music, try using speakers to determine the sound um, discrepancies. Use also wider screen for editing so that details will not be missed. Editing in a small screen may lead to eye problems. Softwares usually have system requirements upon installation. That is why when you edit and your system logs, um, the system processes become slow, rendering or exporting video is taking a lifetime to load, you know, it is most likely that these problems are a product of your computer not meeting the software system requirements. That is why we need to consider your laptop's capability in video editing. I have provided here the specifications of an efficient system that works best with editing softwares. That includes RAM of at least 8GB, a processor of at least an i5 or its equivalents, at least 256GB hard drive space, a good graphics card, a Windows 7 minimum operating system, and a widescreen. In video content assembly, let me give you some tips to work um, efficiently. First is to organize your files. When your files are grouped accordingly, it wouldn't be hard to locate the necessary files to be edited. Second is to master your workspace. Nobody does the editing faster than someone who can play around the working field. For the learners to enjoy learning through your video, graphics must be engaging. It should be appropriate to your target audience and it should rouse their interest in learning. It is also necessary for it to be clean, uniform, and readable. Colors must not be distracting and should follow rules in using complementary colors. Color grading makes the video look clean and enhances the video's overall look. Basing from the image above, the raw video that I took for that certain episode looks orange and the highlight appears too strong. When color graded, 
it appears better. If audio is not enhanced or if it is recorded from a camera's um, built-in microphone, the sound quality may not be that good. Here is an example clip based from our previous TBI episode. In the beginning, the audio works fine, but in the middle or in the middle part, you can notice that the audio um, doesn't sound good because that audio is recorded from the camera's built-in microphone. Here is an example. Correct! It's sagot gulaman. Why? Because in sagot gulaman, you mix the sago, gulaman, and the syrup, but you can still see the different components that you have mixed in. As further examples for heterogeneous mixtures, we can have fruit salad, chocolate chip cookies, and pizza. On the other hand, in homogeneous mixture, all the substances are evenly distributed throughout the mixture. And continuity. Um, continuity is a combination of more or less related shots or different video components cut from single shot into a sequence to direct the viewer's attention to a pre-existing consistency of story across both time and physical location. If we record using two camera setup, editors must make sure that continuity is given attention for a smooth and continuous video flow. Here is an example of editing where shot is continued from camera 1 going to camera 2. Tagsa-tagsa ka mga telebisyon. Ako si Teacher Joanne. And that was continuity. And that is all for today's topic, the video production for TV-based instruction. I hope that you were able to learn something from this explainer. Please don't forget to click on the subscribe button below to get updated on the contents that I will be uploading soon. Lastly, let me leave you this wonderful quote from Matt Mullenweg. It says, technology is best when it brings people together. Until the next episode, sayonara.